I used to want to save the world, this beautiful place, but I knew so little then. It's a land of beauty and wonder worth cherishing in every way. But the closer you get, the more you see the great darkness simmering within. And mankind, mankind is another story altogether. Today's video, we're going to be checking out the new Mezco Toys 112 Collective. This is the Wonder Woman 112 scale collectible figure. The first thing we'll do is we'll measure and figure out how tall Wonder Woman stands. We'll put it right to the top of her head. Stopping the tape measure. The Ultra Measuretron 5000 tells us, yes, that's what I call the tape measure, tells us that Wonder Woman stands 6.2 inches in height, which, translating that to centimeters, the figure stands just a little short of 16 centimeters, 15.9 to be exact. Common things you'll find with the 112 Collective figures is they'll come with a clear baggie with the 112 Collective down below, and I suppose in theory a space in which you could write the character's name down below so that you know this specific baggie is for Wonder Woman's accessories. It's the same bag that we've seen with all the other 112 sale co collectible figures, and Wonder Woman is no exception. However, what was I what is an exception? is that she does come included with the same circular display base. Now present, though, is the Wonder Woman logo on the top. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's a magnet for fingerprints. So probably something that they could have also included with it, though, is like a cloth, something you could just wipe it off. I will likely be consistently going to this and just wiping it down to get the fingerprints right off, because you can see fingerprints galore. Like the logo on the top, there is the connector point right there that you can take the figure's foot and attach her to place like that. Just lining up the hole, there we go. And you can get the figure to stand on the display stand. One other thing that they come included with, Wonder Woman as well, comes included with this adjustable neck. I appreciate for the fact that she does include that. In fact, opening looks for this video, I used the display stand to have her sliding across the floor. Now, the only problem with it, though, is they give you much more, I think, than what you really actually need. There's a hinge here, and a hinge here, and a hinge here, and lastly, a hinge that allows the waist clip to open and close. But I think it's much more than what you actually need. If there was a way to actually detach these, kind of like what I've seen with I think Diamond Select is one of the ones that have done this, where you've got a hinge and a hinge, but then there's also this point where you can pull these out and reduce the size of it. You can take the figure's stand, just get her to stand, there we go, 
and there's that little that little peg, peg point. What you're gonna do is take the knob on the bottom side and push this straight through. Just line it up. Line it up. <laughs> line it up. Line it up, and there we go. And you're just gonna push the peg right through onto the floor. And then from there, you can just attach that. Now, look at that. Look at that. And look at the figure. Do you really not think that that's a little bit too much? I appreciate for the fact that you can, you know, you can use the display stand. Let's get her hand back in place. You can use the display stand to have her say, for example, leaping in the air. But I almost feel like to do anything else but that, you have all this excessive additional joints and neck that you really can't do anything with. When I had her sliding, for example, I brought this as far back as I possibly could get it. And even then, it just didn't have her properly on the base. So Mezco, maybe give us either two, two adjustable necks or give us the means that you can detach these and reduce the length. Because other than having her flying, she really doesn't need a neck that long. Quickly retrieving the peg before I lost it. We can take the display stand, plug that back in place. Definitely don't want to lose that. We'll have a look at the figure, and then we'll have a look at all of her accessories that she comes included with. Now, she does have a fair share, including an interchangeable head. Actually, one better. Why don't we just look at those accessories first? They're here anyways. We'll look at those first, and then we'll look at the figure. So she comes with her shield, which has some nice kind of uh, dry brushed paint added to the back section here. One thing you'll notice, there's a smear right there. Well, the problem with this is the way that you've got it fitted over her arm, let me just take the hand off for a second. When you slide the shield up her forearm, as a result of that, I've noticed that a little bit of silver paint still remains on the shield, which means also that silver paint isn't coming from anywhere, just oblivion, it's coming from right here. So. You may have to worry that excessive putting on the shield and fitting it back over top of her forearm, she's gonna start developing paint wearing off the gauntlet here and end up staying on the shield itself. It's got the strapping here. It's never really a case where I feel like the shield goes far enough up. It always wants to, like if, the, if this part was only a little bit broader, I could get it completely over her forearm. I suppose in theory, what it's supposed to actually be is you're supposed to have the hand attached here, but would mean the shield would have to sit much further back and ends up sitting a little bit loose. Of course, the gripping hand is gonna aid in that because it's gonna grab onto this section right here. Showing you what I mean, I've just added the hand. You can see it's now attached to the strap. Problem is the hand does pop off frequently because it's got a little small peg. And also the problem that comes from it too is the strap now is too big. It's never, never simple, is it? The strap is now way too big, so it sits loose around her forearm. That means she doesn't get a full grip on her shield and it does just give you problems. The hands are always unpegging themselves from it. I mean, the shield looks good. There's no other place from what I can see where you can attach the shield unless you just tuck it underneath her hair. And the hair does a pretty good job of holding it in place, so it's not going to fall off. I guess this is one makeshift workaround to the fact that she doesn't have a clip on her. Again, the problem with these hands, these hands just come off way too easy. There we go. And there's the shield off in the process. Moving on from the shield, she does also include her sword that comes complete with a gold sculpted hilt and you can see Amazonian scripture there on the blade. To the credit of the sword, I like that they've added this kind of darker coloring to it just to make it look like it's a little bit older. Now you can take this sword and you can slide it. As the only way I can see it is there's a little holster here on the side that you can slide the sword into. I don't believe it's even supposed to be there, but I don't think that there's anything else that's supposed to be there either. So the sword for the time being can slide into place. Of course, you can also fit it into her hand. I don't see any other section in which you can slide the sword. Again, much like the shield, you sort of can slide it into the, the holster on the back, but it's not even so much a holster. It's just strapping. You can slide the sword through. Then she comes included with a lasso of truth. She comes with two versions of the lasso of truth, one a wire 
and one just sculpted plastic, a little bit of softer plastic, and it's supposed to clip right onto the side of her belt like that. The other one, like I said, is made up of wiring, which for what it is, it's not bad because at least you can have it sort of displayed on her. At the beginning of this review, I sort of just looped it very quickly to make uh, you know just a little lasso loop there and you can have it sort of angled in the air as she's throwing it. Problem is with this being wiring though, ex you know, extreme bends may be a little harder to get out and you may find little kinks in it along the way. Also with this being wiring, it's not going to have a longevity to it. Bending it too much, you probably will start developing stress to it. Just like a wire would if you are bending in the same place again and again. But, you know, for what it is, it's the cheapest. It's one of the certainly the more cheapest materials that they can use. It's just simply wiring that's uh, colored in the coloring of the yellow. And then it's got a couple of little bobbins there on the ends of it. Again, for what it is, it's not terrible. And it gives you something a little extra to display her with above and beyond simply just displaying her with the molded uh, lasso shut. She also comes with a series of interchangeable hands. The hands I've currently got her in the sockets are the same hands that come included when you get her out of the box. Those are just defaulted hands. But she does also have gripping hands. And she does also have a pair of relaxed hands as well. Depending on, again, how you want to display the figure. She gets one other accessory, but I'll look at that one in a second. That's her interchangeable head, because I want to look, look at the figure first and foremost. And then we'll bring in the interchangeable head. So looking at the defaulted head of Diana, it looks really good. Do I feel it looks like Gal Gadot? Well, that seems to be an ongoing trend. Do ever these figures look like Gal Gadot? And shy of picking up like the Hot Toy releases, which even then aren't the closest proximity to looking like the actor, these are always like hit or miss. Wonder Woman here is decent. Does it look 100% like her? I don't think so. I feel like the head is maybe a little too on the round side. They always seem to go the route of giving her a really round, wide head, whereas really she should have more defined cheekbones. I'm not gonna overly nitpick it, but it does look close enough like her. And of course the outfit is the go-to Wonder Woman outfit that we've seen on all the figure releases. This particular one does have a cloth skirt. The top portion is not is not fabric, it's it's simply just plastic. And it's got some nice detailing there between the gold and the silver, between the the W there on the lower portion of her bodice, and then the eagle on the top there. Also has the Wonder Woman, the little band that she has on her bicep and of course the gold gauntlets that we've already had a look at. Like I said, it's not a terrible head sculpt. It's definitely one of the better head sculpts, but I think it still misses its mark a little bit. This is, I guess, a good opportunity to bring in the interchangeable head sculpt, which I find is actually a little bit better. I looked at the two, and there's really not a lot different between the two head sculpts other than this one has the open mouth, but for some strange reason, the hair seems like it's a little bit different too. You can see it's closer together. She doesn't have these little side hairs on the sides. Other than that though, it's not really that much different, but I find like this is a better head sculpt of the two. And when displaying the figure, I'm probably gonna move towards displaying her with this head sculpt than this one right here. Taking out the head sculpt is extremely easy. You're just gonna pop the head off and then you're just gonna revisit the new head. And you'll see, let me just hold up the one that we just pulled off. You see how the hairs are coming down to the front? The hairs are now completely pulled back and you've got everything sort of bunched at the back of her torso. I feel it's just a much better head sculpt even though there's really not much different between the two. Is it still looking like her? Not quite, but it feels like it's a little closer on this one than it is on this one right here. The 112 Collective Wonder Woman is fairly poseable, but I do find that she has problems in her ankles. Her ankles, at least on mine, are really loose. It means that standing her up can be a bit of a problem. I'm also starting to develop loose knees. Not my knees, her knees, getting a little on the loose side. I haven't really had her out for very long at all, but getting her stand can be a little bit of a problem. I sort of, at times, have to spread and widen her legs so that she gets a proper footing so she doesn't topple over. Of course, 
you can make use of the display stand that also comes included with the figure as well. But she she is a little on the loose side, I have to admit, in the ankles. Now, that's not everybody's figure, but I feel like I have to tell you guys if I have loose problems with my ankles. Again, not my ankles, her ankles. Just in case you're looking to pick up the figure for yourself, you may experience the same similar thing. Although you may also pick up the figure and find completely stiff joints, I just happen to have loose legs on mine. So why don't we run through her posability? And again, she has a fair bit. Her head rotates all the way around. This can be a lot easier with this head sculpt because there's not additional hair that's getting in the way of things. Like I said, the head rotates all the way around. The shoulders hinge out. And through the process of doing that, the hands always pop off. You can see the very small peg that I have to work with. This causes the hands to pop off at nausea. I'm always having to go back and replace it. It may also happen a couple more times. Yes, I know I probably just jinked myself by saying that. The arms rotate all the way around and hinging at the elbow, the hands also rotate all the way around. And there goes one of the hands. See, I shouldn't have said anything. Let's just replace it with this one for the time being. Uh, she has no upper torso ball joint. Everything is sort of encased in the plastic bodice here. Her legs split up quite easily and forward and back. But again, very loose on this particular figure. Looser than I really would want it to be. She has a top swivel on the co top cut of the thigh, about three quarter of a cut. And she has a single hinge on the knee. You can't, you can't, I want to say this, you can't rotate the legs. You may think... I should be able to rotate it. And it doesn't seem like that's the case. I just don't know why it's not pegged in a way that you can rotate the leg if you can. I'm just having a lot of difficulty rotating mine. And then finally, she does have a hinge in the foot. Sort of the same idea, like the feet angle back and forth. She's got that ankle rocker and the feet also hinge up and down. And you can rotate the feet all the way around. Luckily, knock on wood, the feet, the ankles, aren't something that pop off frequently either. Then I would have a real problem. As a whole, I like the figure. It's definitely one of the better looking Wonder Woman, but I still feel like it it doesn't ever quite look 100% like Gal Gadot. There's always ones that get a little bit closer to nailing it. And then the other ones you're looking at, you're like, that's not even close to being Gal Gadot. To the credit of Mezgo Toys, this is one of the better looking Wonder Woman. Even though it's plural of Wonder Woman. It's one of the better Wonder Woman figures. There we go. She does have a fair bit of accessories. A little on the loose side, I have to admit, on the legs. I guess providing that you are using this, a display stand, which comes included with the figure. You shouldn't have too many problems getting the figure to stand. You know, one constant trend that I've noticed that you guys reply with when I post the 112 Collective Reviews is, I like the figure, I just don't think he or she, insert the name of the character here, is worth that amount of money. I would agree. 112 Collective Figures here in Canada, and that's not just one comic book store, that's several comic stores that I've checked out, usually sit at around $100 to $115. Mezco Toys have wanted to put themselves in a specialty category in the same vein as six scale figures from the likes of 3-0, Sideshow Collectibles, and Hot Toys. But they're not quite that. You can get a figure that is in full fabric costume. Wonder Woman doesn't happen to be that, so it's much easier to compare her to some of the other releases of Wonder Woman from different companies. Beast Kingdom, for example, released a Wonder Woman that was taller than this one, didn't have the interchangeable head, but it had just as many accessories for her, and she was around $50. SH Figure Arts and Bandai have also been doing the same thing, releasing figures at around $60 to $65 for about this scale of figure. So it really boils down to, is Mezco trying to create a specialty market for a 112 scale sized figure in the same vein that other six scale companies are doing? $100 is pretty high for a figure like this. And again, I appreciate for the fact that they gave you as many accessories as they did and an interchangeable head, which I actually like a lot more than the defaulted head. But still, I can't think that that contributes enough to justifying paying $100 to $150, probably closer about $130 when it was all said and done. It's probably one of the reasons why you don't see too many 112 Collective figure reviews on this channel is simply put, 
if you compare it to say a DC Collectibles figure, which of course I'm not going to compare DC Collectibles figures to the likes of Mezco Toys, but I can get three of those figures for basically the price of one of these. In all honesty, even though I do like the head sculpt on this Wonder Woman, and I think it's one of the better ones that I've seen in figure form, I would much rather spend a little bit less and get a Beast Kingdom release of the same Wonder Woman for about half the price. And it's at, it is actually about half the price versus what we're paying for these ones right here. Mezco Toys really should be releasing these closer to about a $60 to $70 price point at most. But to be charging $100 to $115, and I know it's at the mercy of the comic book store that has to make a profit from it, Mezco Toys should be distributing these at a much more affordable price, thereby the comic book stores being able to sell these at around $60 to $70. Any more than that, as good as the figure may be, I don't think she's worth $100 to $120. She, of course, does have some problems with her ankles and does have some problems with her knees, and her hands pop out quite frequently, but that may be only just my figure, even though the hands popping out are probably going to be across the board. I have loose joints on my figure, and I haven't had her out of the packaging for very long. So that chalks up to be $120, I sound like a broken record, for a loose figure in the ankles that I don't think was really worth that much money. Either way, guys, if you've managed to pick up this one for yourself, let me know down below in the comments section, or just based on this review and this review alone, would you pick up the 112 Collective Wonder Woman? Or have you picked up any of the 112 Collective figures from Mezco Toys? Or do you think that they're too expensive? Does Mezco need to trim back what they're currently charging these for? Do you feel, what price point do you feel these figures should be selling for? Let me know down below in the comments section. Today we were having a look at the Mezco Toys 112 Collective. This was the Wonder Woman collectible figure. Decent figure, don't get me wrong. Just don't think she's the she deserves she is warranted the price point in which she's being charged for. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other 112 collective figures, now I haven't done a whole lot of them because of that same reasoning. There's a playlist that you can check out and watch at your viewing pleasure. Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below, guys, as more videos will be coming your way. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.